Die kreer wil tijdens de rivier zijn levensbloed, maar kan ook zijn grootste zwakheid wees. Oor die laatste paar jaar het die olifants rivierstelsel nie hoofdtrekken gemaakt. Met dode krokodillen en toxische afval blij die olifants rivieren kopseer vir die wildtuinse wetenskapelikes. As die mens so na die olifants kyk, sou jy nie eindelijk sê, dit is een sieke rivier nie. Hy vloei lekker, die water is helder en blauw, dier is tappel heel dag af rivier toe om te drink, alles lyk prachtig. Maar as wanneer jy onder die oppervlak begin loer, dat jy achterkom, miskien is alles nie so pluis nie. Hier die foto's van die selfde gedeelte van die olifants rivier is dier een bekommerde 50-50 kyker ingestuur. In slechts twee jaar het die rivier dramatisch verander en hy wil weet waarom. Iemand wat hier die vraag kan beantwoord is navorser Dr. Danny Gavender van Sandparke wat gereel die rivierstelsels bestudeer. You know, the important thing to remember is that the Olifants is an overworked river. It has a number of di diverse pollution sources that enters it. And so because of it, you end up having a river that's got a lot of pollution and it's got a lot of nutrients. There was always a fear that the Olifant stelsel can be smet by all the mine industries, in landbouw and nedersettings in their opvangsgebied. The last year, it was a fear that the Olifant Vroeg in 2014 het 5050 aanbieder Simon Gear verslag gedoen oor die toxische afval wat in een saaitak van die olifants rivier ingeloop het. I've never actually seen such an obvious environmental damage footprint as this. And it would be one of an environmentalist's worst nightmares is to have that sort of water flowing straight into the system that's flowing straight into the park. Die mengsel wat uit die bosveld vastfeit sliktam oorgeloop en in die salate rivier beland het, wat weer by die olifants rivier aansluit net voor die kreerwilting binnenvloei, het ram spoedige gevolge vir die rivierse waterlewe gehad. When I walked across, you know, the Olifants River, all of a sudden, you started to see uh, lots of dead fish, and, and when I say lots, literally hundreds of dead fish. We found incredibly low pHs, below two, which really shocked us. We immediately took samples downstream, and what really horrified us was the fact that even far downstream, the pH was still below five. Die verandering in die rivier wat ons kyker waargeneem het, is deels veroorzaak dier verandering in die waterse pH en extra voedingsstoffe wat die rivier binnengevloe het. So Steve, this is what our viewer was concerned about, and I must say, it doesn't look very good. Our rivers are really hard working, so there's lots of impacts on our systems. If we look at the Olifants River here, you can see a lot of the algae, which really is an indication that the system is in a state of change. Dit is hierdie verandering wat die foto uitwees, maar is dit direct dier die bosveld vastfeitstorting veroorzaak? It's very difficult to pin this on any one particular um, issue or event, but definitely the Olifants River is one of the most stressed rivers in the country. And flowing through the Kruger Park, it's also the lifeblood of, of our system and really an important provider of water to people in Mozambique and for agriculture. So taking the 2014 spill, how long does it actually take a river like this to recover from an event like that? It's really something that's quite hard to tell. We were in a position where we were there able to actually witness the outcomes of that spill. There are many of these types of spills going on into many of our rivers and most of them actually go by undetected. And what is the likelihood of something like that occurring again? I would say in the face of increasing climate variability, we are not going to be immune to these types of spills happening in future. Die kreerwildtuin is dalk nie bestand in hierdie stortings nie, maar kan beter voorbereid wees. Die toestand van die rivier kan doopgehou word dier die waterkwaliteit as ook die hoeveelheid species en voedingsstoffe in die water te monitor. So just looking at the water like this, it looks pretty clear, but the big problem is that there are too many nutrients in there. Yeah. It's a big problem. It's nutrient loading. And that's particularly in the dry season when you'll see we are a large part of the river and have extensive mats of filamentous algae. And that's a huge problem because it affects, it sort of takes up all the oxygen in the water and that again affects the biota, the habitats are lost in so on. So filamentous algae is a huge problem. Alien species is a big threat. These include uh, alien vegetation, um, alien fish is a problem, particularly in the upper 
upper catchments, uh, sort of bass and trout. And I can show you a quick example as well, just of the Terebia snail that's here. So we don't want them in the park? Not at all. Um, I think that's also just another external pressure that you're keeping an eye out, is um, invasive species. Uh, I think rivers play an important conduit for the transport of aliens. So we're keeping an eye on it and we're monitoring very closely to ensure that aliens don't enter the park. The impact of the Indringer species on the Olifants Rivier's population was clearly visible in 2009, when one of the most ramps of the Kreer Wildtuin hit. There was no way to do a crocodile world star. More than 230 crocodile carcasses have been found, and the raming is very near to it. The cause, pansteatitis, was easy to identify, but the reason for it was very difficult to find. We want to do a survey on the on the live crocs to see if how many percent of the animals that we are actually looking at are affected. One of the wildlife's greatest wetenschappelijk ontdekkingstochten ooit is van stapel gestuur met wetenschappelijkers, veeartsen en krokodilkenners van dwars over Zuid-Afrika wat betrek is. Dooie krokodille is verwijder in ontleed en levendiges is gemerk en gemonitor, maar die oorzaak van die ziekte het allemaal steeds ontwijk. So what is the status of crocodiles at the moment? The good thing about crocodiles is that they're an incredibly responsive species. The crocodiles reorganized themselves in the gorge, so we had a massive die-off of large adult crocodiles, and the population in the gorge actually halved. I don't think we'll ever go back to the stage of having 980 big, four and a half meter, five meter crocodiles in that that's gorge. That's sad. <laughs> and that's really sad. Mm. Uh, but. But, you know, we are keeping an eye on them. So did you ever find a cause for the pansteatitis outbreak? The crocodiles that were affected, uh, they had a change in their fatty acid composition. The crocodiles seemed like they were starting to eat a lot more of this omega-3s and 6s. They most likely were coming into that diet source through silver carp. Now, silver carp is something exotic in our system. It's an exotic species that's been introduced. I'd be sort of quite reluctant to say that, that we've seen the end of steatitis in the olifant system. And does this disease make crocodiles more vulnerable to other impacts on the river? For example, the Salati spillage that we had in 2014. You know, I think the spillage is one of many. It's one of those things where crocodiles in the system, so if you chose to live in the olifants, you chose to live in a pretty sick, sick river, and so you're always living on the edge. Of it now crocodile or fish is what it is. And of it not a algemene vermindering in your veelheid species is, what in and om ons rivierstelsels voorkom. All hierdie dinge is gevaartekens dat daar ivers iets groots fout is. Dit wil voorkom of ons as mense water sommer maar net as vanzelfsprekend aanvaar. Misschien voel ons omdat het nie soos die dier lewe en asemhaal nie, hoef ons ons nie daar oor te bekommer nie. Ons kan een rivier se loop verander, ons pomp soveel as wat ons wil daaruit vir huishoudelike of landbou gebruik, ons besmeer dit met ons afval, kunsmis en chemikalie en verwacht dan dat dit geen gevolge sal heen nie. Die salati storte en die pansteatitis uitbraak wees vir ons. Ongelukkig is dit nie hoe dinge werk nie. As ons dus werkelijk die kreer wilt en as een ongerepte natuurgebied vir ons kinderse kinders wil bewaar om te geniet, sal ons verantwoordelikheid vir die riviere, wat rechtig die levensbloed van die wilt en is, moet begin neem.